material that's all around us, everywhere we go, in everything we do. Throughout history, it has been and continues to be our most useful material. From the sleek lines of the modern motor car and the strength and beauty of our acclaimed architecture to the simple durability of a nail, steel dominates our modern lives. The story of how steel is made takes us on a journey from the rich vastness of our western mountains to the remarkable technology of our eastern shores. It's a story of immense achievement, a tribute to the steel workers who've built the largest manufacturing facility in Australia. Ireland steelmaking began at Port Kembla in 1928 when the Hoskins family moved their iron and steel works from Lithgow, west of Sydney, to the excellent deep water port of Port Kembla and the nearby coal mines in the Illawarra Escarpment. They hoped these excellent features, along with a better transport infrastructure between their new Hoskins Kembla works and their principal markets in Sydney, would help reverse the fortunes of their struggling business. The BHP company purchased the Hoskins Kembla works, known as Australian Iron and Steel, at the invitation of the Hoskins family in 1935. Today, the Port Kembla Steelworks is the home of steelmaking in Australia. It's become the industrial heart of a young and exciting company. BHP Steel separated from the BHP Billiton Group in 2002 and was renamed Blue Scope Steel in 2003. Iron ore, coal and limestone are the basic ingredients for making iron steel's essential element. Most of Port Kembla's iron ore comes from the world's largest single deposit at BHP Billiton's Mount Newman mine in far northwestern Australia. Millions of tonnes of iron ore are open cut mined from here each year, then crushed and hauled over 400 kilometres to the coast along the world's longest privately owned railway. Nearly 5 million tonnes of Mount Newman ore are shipped around Australia from Port Hedland to Port Kembla each year. A sea voyage of over 3,000 nautical miles, a distance almost half the diameter of the Earth. Another 2 million tonnes of iron ore are shipped to Port Kembla from other Australian and overseas sources. The second iron making ingredient, black coal, comes from BHP Billiton coal mines close to the steelworks. Some of this coal is pulverised into a fine powder and injected directly into the base of iron making furnaces in a process known as pulverised coal injection. The remainder of coal must be converted to a material called coke. Coke is coal that's been washed to remove soil and rock then baked in coke ovens for about 18 hours to remove moisture and volatile materials. Coke is about 88% carbon, an essential element in the iron making process. The third basic ingredient, limestone, comes mostly from Marulan in New South Wales, but some is also imported from Japan. Limestone is called a flux, and when melted, it combines with the impurities in the furnace mixture to form the material known as slag. These three basic materials, iron ore, coke and limestone, are fed directly into the top of the blast furnaces by conveyor. Around 60% of the feed to the blast furnaces is in the form of sinter, a lumpy material made when iron ore coke and limestone fines are fused together in a high heat process. The melting pot for all these ingredients is the blast furnace. 
Port Kembla's number five and number six blast furnaces are the biggest in Australia, each as tall as a 27-storey building. The blast furnaces are fed a continuous stream of raw materials and operate around the clock. Blast furnaces get that name because hot air and gas are blasted into the furnace through jets at the bottom, called tweers, generating temperatures of around 2,300 degrees Celsius as it burns. As the materials in the blast furnace melt down, a chemical reaction involving the carbon from the coke and the metallic component of the iron ore occurs, producing metallic iron. This process is known as smelting. Molten iron and slag collects at the bottom of the furnace where tap holes are opened at regular intervals. The liquid iron runs along channels and into refractory line vessels mounted onto rail cars called torpedo ladles. The slag formed by the molten limestone floats on top of the iron and because it's much lighter is easily separated from the iron. It's then diverted to a slag granulator or to slag pits for cooling, crushing and collecting to be later sold as a useful byproduct. Locomotives then haul the torpedo ladles containing the molten iron to the basic oxygen steelmaking furnaces. This part of the plant is known as the BOS. There are three basic oxygen steelmaking furnaces at Port Kembla and their job is to convert the iron into steel. Molten iron contains about 4% carbon, which makes it too brittle for many of the demands placed on it in the modern world. The steelmaking process reduces this carbon content to less than 1%, increasing the material's durability and strength. Steel is the world's most recycled material, and the recycling of scrap steel forms an important part of the steelmaking process. Around 40 tonnes of scrap steel is charged into the steelmaking furnace before adding a much larger amount of molten iron. The molten iron is poured into the furnace using a huge overhead crane and the steelmaking process begins. A water-cooled lance is lowered into the furnace and blows pure oxygen onto the mixture at nearly twice the speed of sound. This process, which uses one tonne of liquid oxygen a minute, creates a dramatic reaction. The temperature soars rapidly to around 1700 degrees Celsius. Fluxes are added to absorb impurities. The scrap melts and mixes with the iron. The carbon content is lowered and steel is formed. After the oxygen blow, the temperature is checked and a sample of the metal is taken for testing. Results of this test show the composition at the time. If the tests show everything is correct, the furnace is tilted to the tapping position and the molten steel runs out from under a layer of slag into a ladle. This steelmaking process happens more than 50 times a day, nearly every day of the year. At the next stage of the process, alloys such as ferromanganese and aluminium are added to create the required grades of steel. More than 100 types or grades of steel are produced, each with different properties depending on their end use. For example, the modern motor car requires many different types of steel. The car body requires different steel to that used in engine components. The springs in the seat require different steel to that used in the axles and so on. In fact, the modern motor car contains around 40 different types of steel. The next step in the steel making process is transforming the liquid steel into a solid shape. This is achieved by casting the steel into slabs in the continuous slab casting machines. Molten steel is poured into a bottomless mould, where it passes between dozens of water-cooled rollers. As it moves through the caster, the outer layer slowly hardens until the slab of steel is solid all the way through. The slabs are then automatically measured and using computer-controlled gas torches are cut into more manageable pieces ready for rolling processes. 
More than half of the slabs produced here provide feed for the plate and hot strip mills within the Port Kembla Steelworks, as well as for the hot strip mill at Western Port Works in Victoria. Some slabs are sold to customers overseas. At the plate mill, a slab will pass through rollers many times before the desired length, width and thickness are reached. In the control room, sophisticated sensing equipment alerts the operator to the slab's condition and dimensions during each pass through the rollers, down to an accuracy of one-tenth of a millimetre along its entire length. The plate mill makes a range of plate sizes and grades to suit a range of different market needs, including the manufacture of ships and offshore platforms. Slabs bound for the hot strip mill must also be reheated before they can be rolled into hot roll strip. This mill uses advanced technology that guarantees sophisticated grades of high performance steel rolled to very tight specifications. Computers, logic controllers and modern hydraulic devices are used to control the rolling process. Skilled operators in control rooms use microelectronic systems capable of performing more than half a million operations in a second. They can control the thickness of the steel strip to within fractions of a millimetre. Hot roll strip is used in the engineering, automotive and construction industries. Some of the hot roll strip produced here is used as feedstock for the packaging industry. The packaging products tin mill at Port Kembla produces tin coated steel, commonly called tin plate. It's used mainly for making containers for food and drinks. The Spring Hill and Western Port plants produce a range of high quality coated steel products used mainly in the building, automotive and white goods industries. When coated with a zinc aluminium alloy, steel becomes corrosion resistant zinc alum. Pass this product through sophisticated painting processes and it becomes weather resistant colour bond. Bluescape Steel's focus is on a safe and environmentally responsible industry, providing customers with high quality, competitively priced steel products delivered on time in a safe and healthy work environment. Millions of dollars have been spent each year on reducing air, water and noise pollution and creating a cleaner environment not normally associated with such a large industry. A firm belief in the principle that all injuries are preventable has led to a rigorous safety culture amongst the workforce, resulting in a safety performance that is the envy of manufacturing industries throughout Australia and the world. Our most important resource is our people. Today's steel industry offers a wide range of interesting and exciting careers, most associated with the development and use of leading edge technology. Employees and their families enjoy the beautiful blue skies of a moderate year-round climate and one of the most culturally diverse and lifestyle-friendly regions in Australia. The Steelworks has formed close partnerships, consults regularly with and supports numerous community groups, recognising the important ties that a large industry has with its neighbours. Bluescope Steel is the largest producer of steel and the largest manufacturing company in Australia and is steadily reaching out to foreign shores. At Port Kembla, Bluescope Steel has nurtured the region's natural advantages and through a proud history has built the foundations to secure continual growth well into the future. Bluescope Steel.